All righty. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you everybody for coming to the Middlesex Select Board meeting on Tuesday, April 2nd. Recording in progress. Okay, so we're going to welcome our guests. We have Steve from our FEMA world, and we have folks over here. Hello, everybody. We don't need your name unless you're going to speak. So if you're interested in speaking, you can just raise your hand, and I will recognize you and ask you for your name. Um, let's see. We need to approve the minutes of March 19th, regular meeting. Um, and the March 26th special meeting. So you are not here for the no. second meeting. So let's do this separately. Who wants to make a motion for approving the minutes for March 19th? I'll do that. All right, thank you, Vic. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there a second set? All right. Any discussion? All right, hearing none. All those in favor of approving the minutes of March 19th? Say aye. 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 Okay. And then March 26th, that had Zara Vic, and I were not here. Vic, Liz, and Peter. Peter, were you there? Online, right? Yeah, he was online. Yeah, okay. Is there a motion for approving those minutes? I make a motion to approve oh, those. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll second it. Okay, mm -hmm. Peter first, Vic second. All those in favor of the March 26th special meeting? Minutes, say aye. 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 Actually, you aye. don't aye. vote if you're not there, but that's okay. Um, okay. Um, now we're on to improving the agenda for tonight's meeting, April 2nd. Action likely. Is there a motion? I will make the motion to approve the agenda as sits. Okay. I'll second it. All righty. Are there any amendments, Sarah, to the agenda? Um, the only amendment is a um, the annual uh, Silver Wands Hall Waste Management District grant from the Green Mountain for the, for, I'm sorry, for Green Up Deck. Okay. And that's not a big deal. It's just usually I sign it, but since we're talking about that, I figured we just add it to the agenda. Okay. I will amend my motion to include the annual Green Up Day grant. Perfect. Thanks. Is so there a noted, second? So noted, and I'll second. All righty. And Vic seconds. All righty. So all those in favor of today's agenda with the amendment say aye. Aye. aye aye all righty we're right on schedule in fact we're ahead of schedule we're on to awarding bids to contractors whose proposals for permanent work on nine flood related repair projects were unsealed and read at the march 26th special meeting action likely that would be you steve and vic right yeah okay I think that you is. have the floor <laughs> So the town did receive 14 bids. There was one bid uh, that was not read during that meeting because they didn't do any math. They had some unit prices, but that's all they had. Right. So there was 13 bids that, that we did review. Uh, 10 of the contractors bid all nine projects. Uh, so we reviewed all the bids. Um, we did end up, uh, after reviewing some bids, rejected two of the bids because of numerous uh, math errors and omissions in the bid. So then we, uh, we went to the scoring uh, process. Uh, we we're provided with a sheet from FEMA uh, to score on various uh, items of the thing. The largest, largest item on the, thanks Vic, on it, on it is the uh, is low bid itself. Others vary from from uh, past experience, uh, workload of contractors, and that type of thing. So we did have a, a high score, one high score of, of 95, and low scores of 75. Um, our total estimate for the project was two million three hundred and four nine oh eight. Uh, the bids varied; a few of them were above that, but there was quite a few of them below that amount. So, Vic, as the road commissioner, and Eric, as the road foreman, myself as the project manager, reviewing the bids and going through the scoring process, uh, we we're recommending to the select board 
that we accept and award all nine contracts to Dirt Tech Company, LLC, in the amount of $1,912,440. Is Could you repeat that number? One million nine hundred twelve. One million nine hundred and twelve thousand four hundred and forty. To one contractor. Dirt Tech. Dirt Tech. You got their address. The, the, sco the you told scoring sheet what shows they were out of. What town they were out of? One nine. Oh, Colchester. One nine one eight. Colchester. Yeah. What it, the, they're, they're out of Colchester. Where do you see that, the scoring? The scoring sheet that Sarah passed off. Oh, the scoring sheet shows a slightly different number. 1918. 1918, 1190. 1918, 1990. Yes, 190. that, well, let me just see here. The scoring sheet shows what? I have a total of one point. One million nine hundred eighteen thousand. Oh, you're done. Yes, there was, a, there was a math error. One math error in there. Okay, so that number that you just gave is the correct number. Is the correct number. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, are there questions from the board for Vic and Steve? Yeah, I. Uh, Curious about the capacity of the contractor um, awarding all nine or all nine projects. Um, I think thirteen roads, nine projects. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, they have they have the capacity they to have, do all of these in a the timely the manner. Actually, there were several contractors that had the capacity to do all nine. That's a pretty ambitious project, but Steve Steve had a conversation with. Uh, Dirt Tech on Monday. Monday, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. They assured him that uh, assured us that uh, they have the uh, manpower and the uh, machinery to do that. And are these um, the price that they give you? Is that like an estimate or not to exceed? These, or how these, does that work? The, the, the project estimates that we got. Their, their contract, their bid contract, is for the items that we had uh, had listed. That there's a chance that some of these projects uh, items may change a little bit, and in which case we'll do a change order to subtract or add to their contract. But they're if they did it exactly like we put the bids together, that's exactly what they would get for money. Yes, for the unit price. Um. And add that Steve, uh, uh, the, between the time he got back from Florida and the time that we uh, uh, sent the bid, sent the uh, proposal out, uh, went through all the, uh, well, through all his numbers and came up and checked all his numbers. And if there was anything, there was one, one you had to do with, uh, Length of ditch, cubic yards. Yeah, you had to change. That I remember. Anyway, so they've been checked. You know, mm -hmm. we went over them again. Or went over them again. Mm -hmm. It's a key word there is estimate. Have Have we ever worked with Dirt Tech? No, I have not. Uh, I have. Have we Have we done any? Um, I mean, are we planning to like just? check references from other towns? I have checked some. Um, I will be checking more, but we will be talking to them also. Okay. I, oops. Go ahead. I, when I was, my prior, former life worked with them, yes. Okay, thanks. Zara? I'm just wondering if that's a normal thing, that if we have nine jobs that one company gets it, or do you usually like break it up to two or three? Is that normal? You prefer to work with one company? Well, yeah, I mean, there's 10, ten contractors bid all nine jobs, so okay. um, it's, it's fine. I, I mean, I, I think it's a, an easier thing than having nine different contractors. <clears throat> yes. Um, I was just looking at the numbers, and 
I, I think I have, you know, some concerns around allotting all roads to one contractor. Um, I know they say they can do it. Um, you know, if you look at the numbers from uh, a bid stance with the highest scoring on low, the low bid of contractors that we know um, that are in the area, um, you know, there's a hundred and hundred plus thousand dollar difference between. Uh, I think Dirt Tech is low bid on. Let's see, it's. So the Bulldog Culver Hill Government Hill project, which is 24-6, 24-7, which is South Bear Swamp, 24-8, which is Macy Road, and 24-9 for Wood Road. And then uh, looking at the other projects, the 24-1, which is East Hill, 24-2, which is Center Road, Hutchins would come in uh, low bid there and 24.5, they would be low bid. And some of these are significant, like $30,000 difference on a, you know, yeah, it's probably a 20% difference if you look at it that way. Um, and then J.A. McDonald uh, for 24-3 and 24-4. Um, I think for me, just the thought of, uh, the time it's going to take and uh, awarding all of them to one contractor and looking at the fact that there's a savings that, uh, to the town potentially, um, I think I would be in favor of splitting this up to some extent. It's my, my, after my review. Thank you. I agree with that. Sarah agrees with that, Sarah. Okay, thanks. Um, I guess my question would be when I'm thinking about the con, I mean, I, in theory, that makes sense. And, you know, I, it does, yeah. you know, I understand that they might be overestimating their capacity or, but in terms of our process with FEMA and our scoring rubric here, it does look like Dirt Tech comes out quite high compared to everyone else. McDonald's seems pretty good at 80. Um, I guess um, my question would be, is there a reason that it would be disadvantageous for us to go with, in terms of this whole FEMA business, to go with, um, a lower scoring person, a lower scoring group. Is your suggestion that like Dirt Tech takes X number of their lowest bids and J.A. McDonald, for example, takes their lower bids and saves I'm not sure how the contractors are going to react to that, but. Right, that was, that was my other question. Because like, they're, they're, they bidding, like they're bidding nine projects. Um, there was a couple of contractors that bid just a few projects, but mm -hmm. all of these contractors, if you I don't know how they'd react to that. I, I, I just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I guess when I look at it, each, each bid is individual, so they're not. Yeah. We're not getting a volume discount here. I guess is the way I'm looking at this. Or each no. each project is bid individually, and each project is awarded individually, the way that we did this. It's my understanding. So Have you ever heard of uneven bidding? No. What is it? Uneven bidding is when you 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 bid uh, a certain class or a certain site at a lower bid, and then because for some reason you think that you can uh, make money on that or maybe cut it somehow um, and, and, and you actually make your money on the ones that you bid higher on. That's what the state calls uneven bidding. Do you see that in some of this? Could. I don't know. I wasn't there when they were bidding, but you could, yeah. yeah I mean, you can't. You know, to me, I understand, Randy, what you're saying, but 
for us to go out and cherry pick jobs. I, especially when you've got that many guys bidding on all of them. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a FEMA nightmare to uh, keep track of all that because you get you would have I think three different two or three different track contractors with different pricings on different sections of it. I mean, I think I think those guys are pretty much uni pretty uniform all the way through yeah. on all their sites. We did have some that were changed their bids on on the amount of money for each item. They would change it. It might like pipe might be just for example forty dollars on one site, but be a eighty dollars on another site. So why? Why? Yeah. Uh, we because didn't ask them why. We didn't ask them why. Well, maybe, so, why could they? Yeah. Why would I? Why would they? Yeah. Because they can, maybe they think that, uh, maybe they think that they, that uh, uh, there's more uh, of that item on one job. And so if they bid it up, mm -hmm. we're down, they're going to make more money. Peter, what are your thoughts? I could go either way on this. I mean, my initial thought in thinking about this two weeks ago was the idea of having two or three contractors, at least two, um, and dividing them up based on, you know, based on their criteria, their overall scoring criteria, not just necessarily price. Um, but I understand if I was a if I was a contractor bidding on these nine jobs, I would hope that I would get all nine jobs. You know, and there are some economies in terms of moving equipment and material and all that. If you if you got all your equipment in town, it's one thing. If you're bringing it back and forth to do different jobs, it's a different thing. Now that's really their problem, not our problem, but anything we can do to make these jobs go smoother I think is worth doing and have it not drive, not drive our staff people, accounting people crazy, and uh, also not get FEMA all riled up. But you know, I, the truth of the matter is, I could I could go either way. I I think this is a a really good process, and you know, this is certainly the most involved bid process and the most money we've ever. Uh, We've ever dealt with, and I and I think we've done a really good job of of doing this. I mean, we got nobody can say we didn't get a bunch of good bids. We did. Any more to add, Zara or Randy? I just want to say if you if you do take uh, like you said, you wanted to maybe take two or three contractors and go those low bids. If you start picking low bids, then you're going to have to do it totally throughout, so you might end up with six contractors. No, I'm not, I'm not suggesting lower bids. I'm considering lower, lower scores, not lower bids, necessarily. Might be, you know, might be that it's a lower bid, but not so really lower bid. Scores, scores. Yeah, Thank you, Peter. Randy? That, that was going to be my point, is that these contractors are contractor one, two, and three on the scoring sheet. So. Except there's a couple of threes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, again, I think it's, it's you know, some of it is, um, is just concern about the capacity. And, yeah. you know, summers are short. They see. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, you know. I, I came into this review process thinking like that, that it would be best to split the projects up based on, based on that. Did Kingsbury drop out? Pardon? Did Kingsbury drop out? Their uh, bid was uh, eliminated because of their omissions and math errors. Oh, okay. Also in the... The bids, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, that each contractor listed their time of doing it. Uh, this particular contract was, uh, contractor was going to start, was in May and go through to the October Dirt that tech. we set forth. But some of them are going to start in June. 
I think that uh, if you had three, four, three or four, or up to six different, uh, like Steve said, you might have to, if you're going to do that, you probably have to do it all the way. You might have more than three, but how you coordinate, you know, how they're working, they're, you know, I guess if somebody worked on Woods Road and stayed right on it, and, but, you know, uh, if you get on uh, Center Road or East Hill Road and, and they're, they're traveling by each other, uh, so they don't get in each other's way. Yes, sir. Again, when you say this particular contractor, you're not talking about Kingsbury, you're talking about Dirt Tech starting in May, right? Dirt Tech okay. indicated they were going right. to... Okay. We're going to use the parameters of uh, what we set forth okay. of May 1st to October, October 15th. 15th, I think it was. Yeah. Eric, were you a part of this process? And you feel the same? The same, yeah. I mean, I, I guess from my position, um, if as a select board member, I think the role of this <coughs> group was to come up with a decision. And right. so I would go with a recommendation based on the fact that they have looked at them, they've assessed it, and they've determined that this one company will fit the bill for everything. And I completely understand, but I also think it's probably more work to go through and sort of reevaluate these in a looking in the lens of hiring three people and not knowing what those the repercussions of doing that could be. Well, Randy's concerns aren't taken lightly. We've spent many hours the three of us mm -hmm. going through these and going through them again and going through them again. <laughs> so your concerns are valid. I would say I'm going to have to defer to the experts. You know, yeah. if we had put in, in, in the plan that we wanted to have three contractors from the beginning to see how they worked to create that competition, then I get it. But if we're at the, the point now where we want to make the bid, I'm, I'm ready to move. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, so is there a motion to um, accept Dirt Tech as the winning contractor for the FEMA work? Can I make that motion? Um, is it legal? I think you could, but maybe it would be better if someone I'll, else I'll made motion it. motion that okay, we accept Zara Dirt Tech. It. Okay. I, I think you should be clear that it's for all projects. In the yes, for all projects. For all nine projects. Yes. yes, for all of the nine projects on the 13 roads. Yes. Okay, is there a second? All second. Okay, Peter Peter. seconds. Okay. So all those in favor of assigning Dirt Tech as the contractor for all of the nine projects, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Randy opposes. Um, the motion passes, and Dirt Tech can be contacted. Thank you guys for the work you've Yeah, thank us. you guys. Um, okay, so we are next on to approving the fiscal year 25 um, TA60 ooh, annual financial plan for highways. Action possible, action likely. What, what is this, the TA60 annual financial plan? Here we go. Okay, is there anything that we need to know about this? I just want to say that we've done this every year. Yeah. Uh, and it's necessary when you're applying for grants in the spring. It tells the state how much money we are awarded to okay. roads and how much it clarifies what the state's giving to us. And for reasons that I don't understand, we did not do it last year. Aw. We've done it every other year. It Maybe it was COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we Do can we all that. sign? You have to pay, make a motion, then you all sign. Okay. All right, so is there a motion to approve the fiscal year 25 TA 60 annual financial plan for highways? <coughs> Make that motion. Okay, Randy makes that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, big seconds. All those in favor of aye. said motion? Aye. aye. Okay. And then we all sign it, right, Sarah? Yes, <laughs> Okay. Highway report, update on town road conditions, et cetera. Action possible. Nothing Any really to uh, say other than things are starting to dry out just yeah. in time for the snow. I know. Are we um, nervous about this big storm? Nervous? No. Okay. Are we <laughs> sad about it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Completely depressed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Um, okay, are there any questions from the board about the roads or mud season or anything like that? The public have any questions or, okay. Um, how about the equipment? Everything's going smoothly with that? Yeah, nothing's changed. Okay, great. <laughs> Good. All righty. Um, well, we're right on schedule. 525, appointing town voters. Oh, here we are, the Mud Road Subcommittee. Okay, and this subcommittee would research the cost of road repairs, potential grant funding, paving costs, etc. And Sarah has a nice list of you eager have volunteers. All the they kept trickling in. So okay. Let me just run down who we've got. Wow. Do, yes, quite the. Quite wow. The Steve Martin also just added his name. So, wow. We're in alphabetical order. Okay. And, and I'm on that list, correct? Yes, you are. Okay, Paul. Uh, we have, we start with Paul Cermonera, former road foreman, Paul Cermonera. Richard Cowles, he just gave a last, a last minute yep, here he email, is. maybe, but he expressed his interest that or polls or however that the last meeting. Uh, we have Ken Davis, um, who wrote a very lengthy letter about his, his experience and what he's interested in. We have Stephen Dents, our emergency management coordinator, maybe for the breakfast or whatever. Um, he's also written a long email. His interest. He's also here. Matthew Dwyer, who was at the meeting last week, who he also expressed in, he wrote an email that was submitted today. Uh, Dexter Lefebvre just said, I would, it would be my pleasure to serve. Oh. I assume that means on the <laughs> some other way. Um, let's see, who else do we have besides Dexter? Okay. Sandy um, Levine. Sandra Levine, who is right here in the, she can, we can call her on the carpet. Um, Jessica Churchill Millard, I don't really know her that well. She says she's interested in joining the road committee. She's not an engineer, but she can do research. Okay, yeah. Marianne Mullen um, is interested as well. It's a little diverse group here. Uh, John Rayhill, uh, who's a longtime president of Middlesex. Uh, Zach Smith, I don't know Zach Smith, but I think Zara does. Okay. No, he was on uh, one of our last meetings oh, when he? we were talking okay. about it. That's oh, and, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and then Zara Vincent. So that is our, that's our okay. and Steve Martin. So we have a lot of people. Is there anything wrong? Like, no, no, I don't think there's any reason why no one, uh, why, uh, yes, Peter. So before we do this, are we thinking we want as many people as possible, 10 people, five people, I don't know how many people we want. And the other question is, uh, I mean, generally, we understand what they think they're going to do, but do we want to give them some guidelines? Are we expecting them to give us a report? Is there a deadline for the report? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what I would say is we know that um, when you have a giant group like this, some will Peter out after a meeting or two. So I think that we invite everybody who wants to come yes. to be on the committee. Um, I would suggest that they do make it sort of a formal committee and have like a chair and have an agenda so that they're not wasting their time. Um, and that they create that when they um, have their first meeting. Yes. Should we nominate us? I think they should, yeah. So if it's warned, I think they have to, don't if they? If it's a part, if, if if it's an ad hoc committee, then no. For example, Steve, Eric, and Vic were an ad hoc committee. Yeah. But if it's a subcommittee of the select board, yes, they have to warn their meetings and post agendas and minutes. So yes, the answer is yes. Sure. Um. So I think Zara, you are, should you, I talk about what I have started? or what we sure. talked about. Um, so uh, we did find that there are $75 million worth of earmarked money. Um, the deadline to uh, apply to apply is Monday, the 8th. With what's going on with the eclipse, I would recommend that whatever we send in, and I, what I did was I went online and I just printed out all the questions that they're asking. Um, so I can give that to all the committee members once we, we form that. Um, they're, pre they're generally fairly easy questions, except, of course, how much money you want and 
mm -hmm. what's going to go into the road. So I would need people with more expertise. Um, but I'd like to get that in by Sunday, the 7th, because I don't know what's going to go on with cell towers or Wi-Fi or whatever on the 8th. Can I just make a recommendation? Yeah. So if, if you're going to do that, Sarah, yeah. then the board should probably appoint you to just give you the authority to submit that application. Do you see what Yes, I think so. So we don't yeah. have to have a special meeting. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get this meeting together by okay. by Sunday. I would, what, are, what, what, what kind of questions are uh, they? So I printed out all the questions. Yeah. It's probably better. Uh, really what we need to know is how many miles of road and a guesstimate of the cost for that. Because, again, this is just kind of a getting on the radar, and then they would invite us to give them more information if it sounds of interest to Sanders balance. Are you doing to all, all four of them, or all three of them? Yeah, it was, well, it was under Bernie Sanders' uh, Okay, because I think she has website. some, too. I don't know if they're in the same. I think it's all the same, okay. because it's all these agricultural, rural development, commerce, yep. energy and water, financial services, open security, interior. Yeah. Yeah. Did that come out of the Senate? So wasn't it, when they announced it on the RIT TV, it was, uh, it was Welch and and um, Becca and Sanders. I think they all have something. They all, they have, all have something to do with it, but yeah. it was And I just read today that they got another $28 million yeah. on mm -hmm. top of the 75 but they had tw but it was for 20 specific projects. So anyway, this will get us on the radar. It probably wouldn't be this year, but it'll get us on the radar so that in years mm -hmm. future we might be able to get millions of dollars from the federal government for our roads. Start. I think... I had a recent interaction with them, uh, all three, and they they said that uh, just go through one of them. Just go but, through one of them, okay. But yeah. I don't know. That may not be that you can check with them. Um, the other thing too is, I mean, and if it you know doesn't work this year, they may be interest. They may be more interested in like a um, district potential application, you know. Um, as opposed to one small town, because all the towns have this problem. Actually, they have they have it. It's the they they have state government, regional government, local government, or a nonprofit organization. So okay. we, I went under local. You government. went under local. That yeah. would be us. Okay. Um, and if you know, I can get with Vic with just some guesstimates. Yeah. Paul okay. with some guesstimates. I can go. I can go forward. It's not that difficult. So um, maybe uh, Sarah, if you want to reach out to everybody who. Um, who responded, and since Zara, you're on the board, maybe you could I'd be happy to. pull together the first meeting sure. and figure that whole thing out and sort of be the point of contact for the select board for it. That would sure. be great. Okay, cool. That's so, awesome. Do you want to um, uh, give Zara the authority to apply for that? Grant? Yes. Yeah. Um, does anyone want to make a motion that she applies for, uh, she puts in the application for an a, the first application, pre -application right? Yeah, pre-application for the year. What's, sure. what's, the, what's the name of the grant? Um, I, I, I was naming, naming it Middlesex Mud Road Mitigation. But, I mean, who are we getting it from? Uh, it was the Bernie Sanders office. I don't have oh, my It's like a congressional, yeah. um, it's called a congressional um, a uh, allocation or something like okay. that. That's yeah. A, okay, great. It's like an earmark kind okay, of great. thing. Thank you. Exactly. Earmark. Um, but there is a formal name for it, congressional something or other. I'll figure it out. Um, okay, so that's great. Thank you to all the people who. Wait, you didn't. You didn't are, go through the oh, we didn't move it. Right. Who wants to move that, Sarah? Uh, Sarah, that Zara can. Follow the Peter. Okay, Peter moves it, and Vic seconds. That Zara is going to put in the preliminary application. Is uh, all those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Okay, the ayes have it. Thanks for doing that, Sarah. Yeah, thanks. You're Sarah. welcome. Thank you, guys. Alrighty. The mud roads. We're going to be like, um, what are they called? Like, um, when when people are like the flagship mud road subcommittee, and all the other towns are going to follow in our. <laughs> it's not flagship. What is it? Um, this thing has Following to your rut. So yeah. we, I'm getting questions from people saying, well, what happens if people want to join later? And there's no problem. Is that, is that something for the committee to decide? or is that Let them board? decide. Yeah, let them yeah. decide, yeah. Okay. I mean, if it's a warned meeting, people can come. Right. And they can talk if they need. They just wouldn't have voting power necessarily. I don't know what you'll be voting on, but. Um, okay. 
So, oh, right on schedule, 535, joint meeting with the Middlesex Planning Commission, action possible. Appointing a town voter to fill a vacancy on the Planning Commission until March 25th, 2025, town meeting, action likely. And reappointing Larry Rooney and Sandy Levine to serve on the Development Review Board, action likely. Sandy, would you like to join us? I'll come up here. I'm Sandy Levine. I'm the chair of the Planning Commission. It's good to, to see you all. I'm here to just provide an update on what we've been doing. I try to come and see you all about every quarter. M missed some time in the, um, recently, but um, I'll be fairly quick. We did, I'll start with roads, because you all were just talking about roads. Um, the, in response to some of the discussion that's been on Front Porch Forum, the Planning Commission looked a little bit at roads, invited folks to come to two of our meetings to talk about roads. Is, is there a role for the Planning Commission to play in this? And we haven't, I'm not really sure there is, but there could be, which was one of the reasons I was interested in joining the subcommittee, because I, I see there could be a good coordination with what the Planning Commission could do and with what um, the, the subcommittee could do. Um, so we're <clears throat> interested in continuing to, to, to be involved and if there is a role for the Planning Commission going forward, we might be able to, one possibility is we could um, apply for a planning grant to think about um, funding for a five-year plan for our roads for town. Um, or you know steps along the way could tie into language within our town plan and outreach that we could do to residents about what do we really want from our roads. Um, so there there could be an interplay there. Um, I I envision this as working through the subcommittee and reporting back to the planning commission. If there's something specific we can the planning commission can do, we could step up and do that. Um, we also, in the process of doing that, a number of residents in town had reached out to the Planning Commission and shared their thoughts and ideas, and I would share those with the subcommittee as well. Um, but on the projects that we've been working on, we Middlesex was chosen to be part of a state effort looking at how we can help build more housing in all communities. The state developed a Homes for All toolkit. Middlesex is featured in there as sort of a uh, example of a rural community building smaller accessory dwelling unit and how you can do that. What are some of, some of the um, things to think about um, in getting that done? Um, we hope in the future to have our own. There was a lot of interest in this project, the Planning Commission. We hope to have our own meeting of the folks who were interested in the project to come and maybe get some septic and you know septic engineers some state officials to come and talk to folks about what um, homeowners or developers would need to do to move projects like that along um, another project we're working on is looking at walking paths and safety near rumney school that was also something that some folks have talked about on front porch forum um, we hope to get we've gathered some initial ideas and we hope to do sort of a brainstorming session with neighbors, invite the neighbors who live in and along Shady Rill um, to come to a meeting, hopefully at Rumney School, we're in, at our May meeting, uh, see if there are neighbors who are interested in helping with this, um, interested in allowing folks to create a path along their property. Obviously, this can't happen without the um, consent of the landowners, but it's a start to see if there's something we can do with that. Um, next is the Planning Commission submitted some written comments to the state on the Worcester Range State Lands Management Plan. That's the, all the state lands from like the Notch area all the way up to Mount Elmore, the Worcester Range. A lot of that's in Middlesex. Um, we submitted comments on, on the they're planning for that, and there's been you know some some interest in that. We'll review the plan when it's finalized. But because we had just been as part of another project, we were looking at natural resources and wildlife resources in Middlesex. We wanted to share what the information we had in in town with with state officials on that. Um, hopefully this summer we're going to try to work with. Camp Mead and the Regional Planning Commission to see if we can do sort of a temporary demonstration project to slow traffic down a little bit through the village here by Camp Mead. 
Um, there is a provision, VTrans has a provision for doing that. There's a lot of hoops to jump through, but we might be able to, to do that, um, you know, sort of set up some temporary parking places, narrow the roads a little bit with planters or plants, um, mm. do a speed test, see how that would, would work. It's a basically a way without, you know, pay, without doing permanent structures, temporary structures that can try and facilitate slowing traffic down and creating paths for walking and a crosswalk. Um, and then coming up in the fall, we're hoping to be able to apply for a municipal planning grant. Um, we'll keep our eyes out for what that could be for. It could be for road work, different road issues. I don't know if there's additional work, planning work for the town hall. That was the, the last planning grant we had was for that. Um, we also have sort of a project that's kind of ready to go to, for the next step in our wildlife and conservation planning to create the next um, portion for our town plan update for that. Um, we'll be talking about that later in the summer and fall. And coming up in April, I believe together with the um, energy fair, which will be at Romney School, um, some members of the planning commission are working with some experts to have a workshop or a table and information on how to help keep bears out of trash cans and compost because that's a continuing problem throughout Middlesex, throughout Vermont. Um, but there are some resources on that and we wanted to try and share that with folks in town. And then we're hoping in the spring to talk again with um, the folks who are um, planning to develop the uh, former Colby Farm across the interstate on off of Center Road, um, see what their plans are and their plans for um, possibly water infrastructure that could that could be helpful to the village as well. I know they've talked with the select board as well, but that's something the Planning Commission has also been really very interested in. Um, so we're interested to hear what what's happened with that. Um, and we have the Route 2 sort of pedestrian, you know, making the Route 2 section through here better for bicycles and pedestrians that take your life in your hands when you try to walk along here. Um, that's ongoing. At some point, the state will be doing some work on this road other than just paving. We might be able to get some work tied into that, whether it's sidewalks or other work. The, the plans are already there. We've done the scoping study. We've, we've got, you know, initial costs. Um, an alternative would be in, to work with the Regional Planning Commission to break that project down into smaller parts that we could maybe implement every year or so. Um, funding is an issue with that. There's a 20% match, which is pretty high. Um, so, but it's something that we could, could look into doing. It would be the town pretty much sort of taking over a part of that. They would have to pay for the construction, but you would get the grant money for that. So um, nothing final on there. We've done all the planning work for it. It's in place. It's ready to go. It needs funding. Um, so that's, that's where those projects are. Happy to wow. answer any questions or... I have a question about the um, this whole accessory dwelling piece. So it's been a long time since I've looked at our zoning regs, but like a house like mine, like when we bought it, it's like, oh, you can't build another house on this because you only have, you know, three acres or something like that. Is the accessory dwelling different and that like allows for that or how, how does it that is. I do I do not have our zoning regulations committed to memory, yeah. um, but for the most part, when we when we updated the most recent zoning, we specifically expanded the availability of, of what's called accessory dwelling units. There's a size limitation; it has to be like under 1,100 or 1,200 oh, square feet, which is still, still pretty big. big. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it used to be like 600 square feet, really small. So it, it's you know it's a small house size, and pretty much any house can or any property that has a house on it can also have an accessory dwelling unit. Okay. It has to, there, the limitations is my recollection, don't quote me on this, but it has to be in the same ownership. So yes, you could put that on your property, but you would have to own it. You couldn't sell that couldn't to somebody else and have it as a separate but dwelling. But you could rent it. You could yeah. rent it, you could own it, you could have a family member live there. 
you know, a more complicated sort of thing might be a condominium sort of structure. I haven't looked yeah. into that, but I, I've heard that. Well, that's and I a know that Downstreet Housing is offering large grants, like fifty thousand dollar grants for people to build these. Right, and that's one of the things we it. wanted to you know share with folks when we have our meeting later yeah. in the spring okay. about accessory. And they're still doing that. They're right still doing that, okay. and that's still available. Yes, Shelley, did you have a comment? Yeah, I think um, my understanding, if it's an accessory dwelling, it's got to be a. It, it can't be over a certain percentage of the primary dwelling. I don't you mean size-wise? Yeah. I am pretty yeah, sure it's like that or or, 12, or 11 or 1,200 right. square feet, whichever is two. larger. Yeah. But okay. you know what? I think some, something happened in town. They build, they build the accessory dwelling unit first, then they build the house, and oh. they swap Weird. it or something. You yeah. know, I, there, yeah. Yeah. there's yeah. some exactly. But you yeah. can build like a yeah. set. You can have a septic and everything put in. I believe so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or you, you can also the share idea your septic. Tie in to your exi existing. It, I think it can tie into your existing. If Except if I have a if it's, leach if it's, field, I don't have a septic. Yeah. I, mean, I don't have like a yeah. mound system. Yeah, and I think some of the septic issues are the bigger issues, yeah. particularly in a town like Middlesex. That's okay. where it's a f fairly high cost. Gotcha. Sir, I'm sorry. What's your name? Ken Davis. Ken Davis. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I just want to say we just finished an apartment as an addition onto our house, so it uses the same septic, the same water well, the same power supply, and it turned out to be about 900 square feet, but it was for my mother-in-law, so right. it took a long time to get it done, but what the point I wanted to make was the zoning allowed it. Okay. It was... And that's attached to your house, like it was an yeah. added on to your existing... Yeah, we converted a woodshed into a kitchen. Gotcha. And a, storage room into a bathroom and then added a living space. Hmm. It makes sense that it would be under the same ownership and that would be the, the structure that you've got to deal with. I think you're you were right when you were talking about, you know, have, being able to have separate utility functions to each dwelling unit. Um, but the property ownership would be the key. Yeah, that, that's the key. So like when you sell it, it sells as one thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I think the, the other thing I wanted to add, and just working with our DA on this, because we had a couple of these this year, is that right now they have nothing in the state of Vermont, so we use it as a, an outbuilding apartment, it's called. And the, the cost that's included in the outbuilding apartment is a full kitchen and a full bathroom. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Hmm. yeah. yeah. It'll be my single living. I'll move there when I get old and can't climb the stairs anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions for Sandy on all that good work you guys are doing on the Planning Commission? Do you give us a little bit of a idea what or about the uh, Worcester Range? Yeah. What you advocated for, or what you said, or. Um, where that's going, who makes the decision? This, the state of Vermont, um, I think it's Forest Park, no, not Forest Parks. Um, Fish and Cane. No. It's, it's, a, it's one of the departments within the Agency of Natural Resources. It's the one that's responsible for the trees. <laughs> Is that Forest Parks and Recreation? Yeah. Forest yeah. Parks okay. and Recreation, yeah. yes. Um, it's the, it, they're the ones who will be deciding. This was the only sort of the only time that it, it was a, a fairly generic plan that they that they produced. Um, and what we advocated for was there were two two things in in particular. The state had recently passed a law um, supporting more. Um, uh, more land set aside for to remain in, or to develop old growth forestry, and also to um, have area more land set aside as ecological reserves. And given that the area of the, the pieces of land in Middlesex is all <coughs> higher elevation, the state lands in Middlesex and along the Worcester Range are higher elevation, have not been logged for a long period of time. Um, we pr we recommended that that the Middlesex portion of that land be set aside as an ecological reserve. Isn't that the, the, uh, the, uh, the issue between Forest and Parks wants to manage, have forest management, right? It, it's, a, it's going to, it will be a mix of forest management and, you know, some areas will not be. But Middlesex won't. Middlesex won't what? Be part of the forest management. It, 
I mean, it won't, that, be, that's lo what, it that, won't be logged. That's what they will be deciding. Yeah, it I mean, been decided under the yet. plan, you know, I think most of the land in Middlesex, other than the really high elevation land, would be eligible for logging. Yeah. If it was in a ecological reserve, it wouldn't be. But we own that land in Middlesex. We don't. No. It's not. It's well, we own we own land. That's the. Um, Okay, this like is the management forest. plan only for the state yeah, just lands. For the state lands. State lands. Yeah. State okay. lands. That does not include the Middlesex Town Forest, right. which is part of the Worcester Range, but that's under separate yeah, management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. We, the town of Middlesex, decides how that's managed. Okay. She did send out the comments, I think, back in February 19th. If anybody yes. wants to read those. So our town plan advocates for conservation, right? Yeah. Another question about the uh, Rumney, uh, the walking path on Shady Rill. Does the town not have a right of way that goes into people's lawns anyway? That could be turned into a path. I don't know where that town where that town right of way is. I mean, that'd be one. Th I would hope that's one thing we would kind of look at. You know, roughly measure where that is. Is there a right? It, could we yeah. I mean, it have often a, goes into people's lawns. Yeah, but <clears throat> I don't think, I think you have to be cautious here because I don't think because the, the town has a right of way for the road for public access there. I, yeah. I, I don't know about building sidewalks. And no. That kind of thing. Yeah. Without. Yeah, but I mean, certainly the town has the, all of the rec fields that are there, and it seems like, it, you know, place to start is can we have a walking yeah. path that goes along yeah. through, the wet, sure. through the rec fields? Yeah. We would come to, you know, if that's what's talked about, obviously we have to come to the select board. Okay. Any other questions for Sandy? All right. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. Did we talk about, oh, we still need to um, appoint a town voter to fill a vacancy on the planning commission? We've had only one candidate. All righty. Um, and that is uh, Paula Otenti. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. shall we make a, motion. make a motion for that? Make a motion that we uh, uh, appoint Paula Otenti for uh, planning commission. Second. Okay. And Zara seconds it. All right. All those in favor of Paula Otenti to be on the Middlesex Planning Commission. Thank you, Paula. Aye. 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 Okay. Congratulations, Paula. Reappointing Larry Rooney and Sandy Levine to serve on the Development Review Board. Action likely. Is there anything we need to learn about this, Sandy? I'm, I'm assuming they want to do it. I did contact both candidates, and both candidates said they would love to serve. Okay. And is there any other interest? There was no other interest. Oh. Okay. Well, there are some requirements. I mean, some people have to be from the planning commission, so it's 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 there. It's a it's a wiggle room. Gotcha. I mean, okay. Room. I would make the motion. Okay. Um, Randy has made the motion. Second. Azara seconds. All those in favor of reappointing Larry and Sandy to serve on the DRB, say aye. 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 Okay. Did you guys vote? Okay. I said I. I didn't hear you. I did. I abstained. Okay, Vic abstained. Well, I didn't say anything. I <laughs> you're, you're striking this. Well, no. <laughs> okay. Um, it's we're we're now ahead of schedule, but I do see Adrian here. Is there any reason why we can't jump to Adrian Megida five minutes early? You're not waiting for anyone, right? Adrian. We're waiting. I can do two things, and then we're waiting for um, Brian on Zoom, and he might be there already. Okay. Brian is on Zoom. Oh, Brian is I on am, Zoom. I'm, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let's, let's, let's do the EWPP program first. So okay, we, great. We so, Brian, we'll start with the EW, um, the Emergency Watershed Program. Um, so, okay. consi yeah, considering MCC's request that the select board engage in engineering services for the NRCS Emergency Watershed Program. All right, Brian, is that something you're going to explain to us? Yeah, so um, hi, everyone. Brian Voigt, a senior planner at the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. I met with you, uh, I feel like it was maybe two months ago now, 
to talk about this program and uh, the next steps. And at this point, we have conducted a request for proposals. Um, that RFP period closed uh, about a week and a half ago. We received two proposals uh, as part of that process, one from um, Northeast, uh, or sorry, New England Consulting Engineers for $38,000 and the other for from Fuss and O'Neill for about $166,000. Uh, as a reminder, the budget, the engineering budget for this project was uh, capped at, at $40,000. Um, CVRPC staff uh, conducted um, reference checks for both of the um, both of the proposers, and we followed up with the Natural Resources Conservation Service staff to better understand um, you know budget constraints and any engineering or design considerations they had in the decision making process. Um, following that, uh, as, as part of that, we also met with uh, Adrian and um, uh, Larry Becker uh, to discuss the, the proposals. So after going through that, that process, we're recommending that the, the town of Middlesex uh, proceed to contract with the New England Consulting Engineers to handle the uh, design, bid, and construction oversight services for those 10 projects that were funded by the, the NRCS. Can I just point out something? Yep. Um, so you guys, do you all have this in front of our, do you have this part of the that you see this? Yeah. Brian, can you just say slowly the name of the, the company that was a higher bidder? Uh, Fox and O'Neill. Fox and O'Neill. F U S S. Thank you very much. I can put it in the chat if that would help. No, we, we have it here. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Okay, so Adrian, refresh my memory. <laughs> have we have we agreed like to do all of these ten projects, or this is like the engineering this piece is that just is the engineering right. piece? Okay. And originally, the grant was to cover one hundred percent of engineering. That's mm. always been true. Right. Um, okay. Now it's one hundred percent of the construction. So the first step is to get the engineering okay. set. Um, often the state engineer will do this part of it, but they're too busy. And so that's why we have to That's why we're, bid. okay, great. So we you? haven't committed yet, and or, or have we to all 10? If I can't remember the price. We, we have, the, all 10 people have said they're interested in moving forward. And as Mike LaPointe, oh, who's the state engineer, said they can pull out any time until okay. the, the shovel's in the ground. Right, and the good news was that we figured out how to do the payment for this. The NCR, the so that we didn't CS have to. Grant is going to cover 100% of the landowner's costs yep. now. Yeah, gotcha. And originally it was only 75. And we're going to work out the nuances of payment and due dates so that we don't have to borrow for this. Exactly. Right. And, and CDRPC is going to help serve in that role. So the. The contract will, assuming you are willing to move forward with the contract, the contract will specify the uh, the invoicing procedure. They'll come to us for approval. We'll send them to you and prepare the advance uh, form for NRCS at the at the same time. So the big change there was that the town didn't have to pay money and then wait to be reimbursed um, once the invoicing process has gone through and we fill out the appropriate paperwork. We can request. Um, funds to pay the, the contractor uh, in a, a timely fashion. Yeah, that's cool. That was really helpful. We're appreciative of that. All right. Are there any questions for um, Brian or Adrian about this particular um, emergency watershed program um, where we they're, where they're recommending New England consulting engineers? Nope. OK. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve New England engineering, consulting engineers? OK, Randy moves. Second? I'll second. Vic seconds. OK, all those in favor of hiring um, New England consulting engineers to work on the emergency watershed management program, say aye. 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 All righty. Thank you, Brian.
Yeah, so just, just really quickly, um, next steps, we will have a, a contract um, for the, the town that you can then, um, I'm, we're happy to share it with the, the New England Consulting, but I'd, I'd certainly want someone from the town to, to take a look at that before we send that out for signature. And um, I was listening to the earlier part of your meeting and, and uh, heard about some construction uh, bids. If you have um, construction firms that did apply for that other project work that were not selected, we'd certainly be interested in knowing their names because we can direct solicit them at the time of uh, bid for the, the 10 projects that will be constructed as part of this uh, emergency watershed uh, protection plan. So you can pass that information to Adrian and, and she could share it with me, please. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah will send it to you, Brian. We can okay, do that. There's no secrets Sarah. for that. Okay. All right, that's cool. That's all Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Ten, ten landowners that are going to be very pleased. Um, all right. Thanks, Brian. And so now we. Thanks, yep. Bye bye. And so now we're going to talk about this lovely loop. Yes, and she, let's do a green update first. I okay. think Dave Shepard's going to come, but if he doesn't, I can talk He's about there. it. Dave is here. Okay, Dave is on there, yeah. Oh, okay, go ahead then. Talk about the loop, sorry. Okay, Dave is here to talk about the loop. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know if anyone's had a chance. I didn't get it to you very early, but there is a little write-up. Um, the the uh, Town Forest Management Plan has a section on trails and recreational use. So I did prepare um, something to address the various criteria that are in there. But by way of just a quick overview, um, as some of you may know, if you've been up to the town forest, there's an old woods road that goes in past the two cabins. And that's been used kind of anecdotally for recreation for quite a long time. So this proposal would be to use that old woods road, but then to kind of create an additional piece of trail that would loop around and tie in to the lower end of Chase's mountain trail to create a loop that people could do rather than having to just walk in and walk back out. And it would be a shorter, easier kind of a trail if someone didn't have the time or inclination to you know, do the entire trail up to the top of Chase's mountain. Okay, it it doesn't look shorter, but it is. <laughs> uh, yes, um, the scale is a little hard to kind of grasp here, but like if you look at the distance from the parking to the trailhead kiosk, um, you can kind of see that the whole trail is probably similar in length to that, maybe a little longer. Um, we did measure it as being about a mile, whereas the Chase's Mountain Trail is, you know, like 2.2 miles. And the terrain is mostly pretty gentle too. It's there's not really any real steep climbs or or drops on it, other than the very first or the very last part, depending upon what you do it. That's on the Chase's Mountain Trail. That's you know, slightly steep, I guess, but not that steep. And there's one other spot. Another, other than that, it's it's pretty pretty gentle. There are some wet areas, so we will need to do some drainage work to try to address that. So the new part is by the two cabins. Correct. And then it loops up to where, I don't, if, you, if you have the map in front of you, it loops up to where it says river, and then it continues on from there and back over. And the dotted line is the uh, Chase's Mountain Trail. Oh, OK. So you're only <laughs> seeing a tiny, tiny piece of the Chase's Mountain Trail. Chase's Mountain takes a long time to go up. You're going up and down and up and down. So this new purple is all new. And the green yeah. dotted is the actual existing trail. Correct. So is the camera where it says River Junction? That isn't the view from where we, when we get to the top of Chase's. No. No. Oh, no, no. This is uh, just a little viewpoint over the, over the stream. I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were well, saying that there was going to be a loop seeing, from the. You're probably only seeing about a tenth of the Chase's Mountain. Okay. <laughs> All right. So are you, so there's not going to be a loop from the, the actual trail. This is a tiny little loop within the town forest. Like, yeah. I thought uh, that you were making a loop for the, the main trail. Like it wouldn't be an out and back. What? 
No. Oh, no, no. Okay. Not, not the Chase's Mountain Trail. This is just a gotcha. separate little loop to kind of try to serve a different... That's nice. I like that. Trail. Okay, that's cool. I guess I just did not read that. I wanted a loop on the big one, and that's what I <laughs> thats what I read, was a loop on the big one. All right, that's cool. That's a long-term possibility, but that would be considerably more work than this one. And I was like, how could it be so short? <laughs> Okay, any questions for, um, do we have to make a motion? No, yeah, you're just is, telling what, us about this, right? What exactly is he asking us? Really? I think you're just telling us. You're just telling us, Dave? Yeah, we don't have to move this, well, do we? I guess we want to make sure you don't have any objections. I mean, the, the decision-making process for projects in the town forest is not entirely clear. I mean, the management plan says something about needing to have town approval. I'm not quite sure what that means. So oh, um, it seemed best to make sure that no one on the select board had problems with it before we got very far down the road. Okay. Um, I think the big question that I would have is if, if doing so limits the use in any way other than what it is today for folks. I was just reading through here and it was like talking about mountain biking and talking about how the trail isn't designed for that and uh, other things. And I guess my concern would be that if folks are using it for in any capacity like that today and then we're limiting that i would have concerns with that yeah, i don't think anyone's using it for mountain biking yeah they don't, the uses of the of the of the uh, town forest doesn't allow for bike, biking does it <laughs> dave did you hear that is is biking even a mountain use biking? mountain biking in the town forest uh, it's not prohibited but like the chase's mountain suited for it and this probably wouldn't really be either i mean i don't i don't know that if someone really wanted to do it i don't know that they would be prohibited from doing it but it's just not really designed for that be massively impressive and are, hunting is allowed right in the town middlesex town forest or not oh yes yeah okay yeah. so okay so we're not we're not restricting use in any way so don't shoot the biker <laughs> no, no. Um, if, if anything, we might be increasing it a little bit, I right. guess, just because it'll, you know, make it a little easier to, you know, people that might be inclined not to want to go walk there because they didn't know where they were going would have a trail to follow or another trail to follow. And the Chase's Mountain is kind of hard. It's st it's strenuous. It takes a long time and it keeps going on and on. You think you're at the top and you're not, and you're like, oh, I've got another. So this will be nice for people that don't want to take a giant hike. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to take your dog for a walk or something, you know, it's, it seems like a, a reasonable thing to do in an hour or two in the afternoon rather than, you know, having a half a day thing to plan for. We were, we were also thinking about children. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's nice. Yeah, it is a, a little, it is better. Um, yeah. We give cool, it. and there's a stream and everything, yeah. so that's fun. Yeah. And the cabins, the scary haunted cabins. <laughs> Um, is there, should we make a motion that, yeah. that they should proceed with this possibility? Okay, sure. Vic's going to make that motion. I'll second it. All right. We got Vic motioning and Zara seconding the, cre um, the recreation or research of a loop. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 The ayes aye. have it. Good. Good work, Dave. Okay. And then finally, thank you for coming, Dave. Um, finally, we have Green Up Day. Um, John Eudis usually does Green Up Day. He is somewhere south right now, so I said I would do this for him. And he is requesting a um, dumpster to be put at the town garage on Green Up Day. Casella is willing to do that. They did it last year for the first time. Before then, it was the pickup, I mean, the, the dump truck, and you had to climb up this huge ladder, yes. dump the stuff over without knowing what you were doing. Um, the dumpster worked much better. It's $125 for Casella to deliver it. It's $205 for them to remove it. And then we figure about $150 for the tonnage that's in it. And that's a guess, but that's what it was last year. So that comes up to $580. In the town report, there was a line for Green Up Day that said $500. And we didn't know whether you had used that last year for the dumpster or you use it to pay for the tires that are collected that you then dispose of, because the town disposes of all the tires that are collected. One year we gave them away 
I thought that we also had, there's a grant you can get. Well, here's, yeah. that's why. There is a, Ma Madam Chair. Yes. Me interrupting here for a second. What <laughs> no, did I do with do. this? Oh, here it is. The green There's bag. there. Just so happens. <laughs> and this is for $400. They've gone down from 500 to 400. Oh, no. So um, pretty much it can be any trash disposal, recycling, trash bags that you cannot use it for it to pay the town to, to pick up stuff or food and beverages or any activity yeah. does not occur on green up day. But other than that, it should cover part of that cost. Awesome. So okay. that's the grant you're talking about. 400. That's the grant, 400. 400. It's a, the, here comes the former treasurer. Yeah. Yes. So we've always applied, or the person heading up green up day has always applied for that grant. We've gotten it and then we put $500 in the budget to offset other costs. Okay, so really there so could be technically nine hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay, and so the um, dumpster would be about six hundred, and that's a little bit of an estimate depending on how much trash we collect. And then the rest of that money could go towards the tires that the town has offered to dispose of. Okay, so that comes, I mean, it sounds like it's going to get covered, it's though. It's going to get pretty close. One year, somebody, um, actually it was Steve Martin's son, got a farm to take yeah. the, tires, oh, the tires, and they used them on the yes. farm. Okay. So um, we could probably, I don't know who would have that information. Post in but, front porch forum, see if somebody wants yeah, to. Yeah, but I know <laughs> a farm took all the tires. That's awesome. Okay. Um, Steve's... Was it Steve's brother-in-law that had it for his no, farm? No, Shane's, Shane's kids. Shane's kids. Okay, yeah. Okay. Which is now. Who would the name and contact email for person who will be submitting the receipts? Is that you, Sarah? Sure. I mean, it could be John Udis. I always submit them. Okay. okay. Somebody needs to apply with, for the grant. Though. I will check with John to make sure he applies for that grant. I just wrote myself. Well, I think, no, isn't this it? This is it. Oh, All I have to do is there? submit oh, this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. What is your email clerk at Middlesex Vermont all spelled out? Probably. Yeah. Thanks. But you should sign it as the authority. I did. I'm so authoritative. So he doesn't have to apply for that. Never mind. Vermont.org? Is it dot org? It is dot org. Okay. <laughs> okay. So can I just ask yes, a question? Is this like the normal fee for Casella to do a dumpster? Is this a lowered fee because it's green up day? Or has anybody contacted Casella and see if they'll give us any money off? And you spelled out. John has definitely yes. contacted them. And this is the price that they gave him. And I don't know the answer to that question, whether it's a lower fee than normal or not. I have a contact at Casella. Peter so if you want to get John question. in touch with me, or I'll get in touch with John. Okay. okay. <laughs> with all the yes, um, Peter. I will do that. Thanks. I was just going to say that my memory is in the past it does a special rate for green up deck, but I don't know whether it is this year or not. And it's, it's the same rate that it was last year. I, I'll tell you right now, that's a different rate than what you would get as a Normally. general calling. Okay. Okay. Um, is Bulldogs going to do a metal recycling? Yes. Okay, yeah. good. All right. I've signed it, sir. Thank you. Um, okay, that's great. Um, anything else? Are there bags going to be available this year? Yep. Okay, He's good. Them downstairs right now. Oh, you do? Oh, great. And Green Up Day is what day? May 8th. May 8th? May 4th. May 4th? Does that sound right? Yes. The first Saturday of May? The first Saturday of May. I think it's I'll grab 4th. some bags. I like Green Up Day. All righty. Um, so we are a little bit early. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, no, it's 6.15. We're not early. Um, Mark Steinberg and Linda Sue, who, Sue, Sue, um, application for a buyout of their camp. Um, so I just did a, just some, I looked on FEMA. Was there anything that like they, that, that would prohibit like a second home or a camp from a buyout? And it appears that no, that's not the case. Um, they may prioritize primary homes, but um, I also um, just sent an email earlier today, but I haven't heard back, just to see, like, would there, just for the sake of these owners, is this, you know, a shot in the dark that they'd actually get this guy out? I actually, so yeah, I, go ahead. since our last meeting, there was correspondence with the state. 
And the, okay. of Envi the dam division of the Department of Environmental Conservation owns the land on which they sit. They, that's, do you understand what I'm talking about? Repeat that. Who, who, the, 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 the camp owners, Mark Steinberg, their camp doesn't sit, it's, it, it must, it's, it sits on a little teeny weeny middle sex parcel in the middle of state land. Oh. So that's the complication. And my question, my conversation with the, with the state has been, you know, if, does the town want to continue to maintain this little parcel in here? It's not easy to do. You know, once you remove the house, there's the conservation commission committee will have to come, commission will have to come in and take pictures every three years and submit them to the state to show that they have it, this land hasn't been developed. But apparently, there's some interest in the department of the dam division of the Department of Environmental Conservation about maintaining that property if the board approves the buyout. The reason why it goes before the select board is because you're saying yes. We will allow uh, we will allow this application to go forward, knowing that this property will fall off our tax rolls once it does. And you also, this is also not the final say. You're just basically approving them to go through the application process. Right, but you're saying that the state actually wants that parcel. They don't want it, but they they I've been saying I just don't think that this, the town is. I think the town's going to have some problems maintaining a piece of property that's not yeah. really part of the town. You know, and anyway, apparently the state is, is okay with taking over that responsibility after the buyout. So they say today. <laughs> so they say. <laughs> but again, you're not, this isn't the final decision. It's just like all these other Yeah, projects. okay. You're just, if you decide Give to take this up, you're just saying yeah. this application can move go forward. Okay, so I am fine with having their application move forward. Is there any discussion or worries? <laughs> Feels a bit weird to, it, to to send a camp for buyout to me, but it feels a little funny to me too. But I don't know that that necessarily yeah. is that well, matters, right? Um, because it's there's there's nothing in the FEMA information that I found that remotely suggests that you know that's not okay. Now they now the state. My understanding is the state pays. A percentage of the, you know FEMA pays seventy five and the state pays twenty five. The way it's been working uh, is that this in the past it's been that FEMA has paid seventy five, the town theoretically has paid seven has paid twenty five percent, but the state either runs finds a third party organization such as Two Rivers Out of Quichi, to chip in for the twenty five percent. But in this case, and ever since the July flood. The state has taken over everything. So the town has just gone through the approval process of these buyouts. But now I, for example, am not doing the buyout like I did on Rich Road, yep. where we had to go through all that. Now the state's handling all this. So the state will be handling this as well. So I don't think there'll be a dime of town funds. Right. And so the state will decide whether or not they want to buy that. The state will decide whether or not, yes. If they want to allocate whatever funds they have left. And the state's very well aware of this case. Yeah, so I would say that let's go ahead with Move these yep. people out of window. Yeah. There's nothing precluding. And then them. yeah, there, there's yeah. Okay, so is there a motion? So moved. <laughs> is there a second? For seconded. Okay, so um, this select board. Oh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 So we passed the motion for approving the application for a buyout of their camp at 366 Vermont Route 12. Yeah. And I think you have this, the places to sign your list. I don't I know if Peter voted. Oh, Peter, did you vote on that or no? Yes. Did you say aye? aye? Okay, thanks. Sorry, I didn't see you, Peter. Okay, so we have another like five minutes before. Um, uh, we no, I'm sorry. Yeah, we have third. It's at six thirty that we adjourn for the BCA. Okay, so. Status of rack space emails for office employees. <laughs> Action possible. I don't know anything about this. Who who's in so I, of this? I I guess I'd like <laughs> clarification as to is this a question of rack space emails being set up for new employees? Is that why this is on here, or is this on here because uh, of the conversation about switching this over to Cod? Says office employees. Can I, can I yes. Peter said, add that to the agenda. Okay. <laughs> so, but before we go I, 
Uh, can I just say something? We've yes. had a lot of discussions in the office with these guys who just installed our new copier. Yeah. And they're eager to get our IT business. Oh. And my recommendation, now that I know all about RFPs and I love them, is that I think we should RFP this. Yeah. Uh, work for IT because there are two or three companies at least that want to want to do our IT services here. So before we get into whether or not we bring back RB Tech to deal with this, maybe maybe that might be something the board might want to consider. Okay. Um, should we um, think about making making a motion for that right now, or put that on a, an agenda so we can more thoroughly discuss? Put it on the put it on the agenda. Put it on the agenda. I don't yeah. think you can right now, right? No. Oh, right, because there's no right. Okay. So yeah, so let's put it on next week's agenda to talk about it. Um, and so that would be IT plus our email systems. Well, that would all. That would be, I'll be part of it. Yeah, I'll be a part of it. Right. Okay. I think you might want to consider the server too, because part of the discussion was whether to move to the cloud, which would affect the purchase of the server. Right. I think I think it'll all be covered if you if you list it as IT needs. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Welch Park update action possible. Sure, I saw. This is a great embarrassment to me to tell you this, what? but our attorney who was working on amending the agreement has temporarily closed her office because her sister has brain cancer and she's traveled out of the state, oh. which is sure. which is a really sad situation. And you know, if I was okay. if I was in her shoes, I'd be doing the same thing. So, but um, Carl Balin <coughs> has contacted a uh, Bryce. Breton, uh, who he knows and has worked with, and Bryce has promised us that for about the same money that she was charging, he will do it, and he promises he will have it done, if at all possible, by the end of the month. So we're hopping down the bunny trail, but we're not there yet. Okay, great. We're now on our third attorney. Randy? Um, I was just going to ask about uh, invoicing that was left unpaid because we were trying to tie this up and get this finished up. Um, has that been cleared up? Last I heard, it wasn't. I would say no. I would say no. And I would say at this point in time, we need to unfortunately handle it the way we have in the past and divide it up and send out the bills and collect the money. Well, we already had the insurance policy canceled. I forwarded, or Cheryl forwarded you that email. I did not see that, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> How much is the bill? Um, everything's in that blue Let's folder. Just pay it. Yeah. Was that I don't, or was it actually canceled? It's actually canceled, I believe. But, and then there was two watershed bills. You were going to call Cheryl on them. Um, okay. Uh, I believe, as I, as I said before, I believe that those need to be paid by Benderson. Yeah, you are hereby given written notice of cancellation policy number da 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 for non payment of premium. Oh. She said so we didn't pay it. No, because we were waiting and now it's for canceled. direction. And then uh, the is other it too late one. Did we get a cancellation notice? I would not know. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I can't you answer that one. Um, and then there was. Uh, two consulting bills for watershed consulting associates, one for $450, one for $341. Up oh, and here's a third one for $286. We should send those to Benderson. So all the all these bills go. Wait a minute. Now I see another one. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, that's duplicates. So, um, so the three watershed bills you want to go to Benderson? Well, when you say watershed, aren't they for watershed, the of the water supply? Watershed Consulting Associates. It's stormwater inspection and reporting. 
professional fees and reimbursable expenses, and a water resource scientist. Wow. Yes, Sarah. We also it have a sound like, That doesn't sound like it's the water supply. That sounds like it's the stormwater runoff from the road. That's what it is. Yeah, hold on, Peter. Sarah's. So it, it's the stormwater runoff from the road. Because Welch Park, um, I think it, I, I actually think, I'm trying to remember, because it is still not, it was still not a town road, it's not town, part of our town municipal uh, groundwater program, stormwater program, getting yeah, those permit for the entire town. So their Welch Park needs its own stormwater permit. And I believe that that's so, what it pays for. Right, but well, a, my, my uh, memory is on that is that we, the town, need to pay that for one year and then it will be incorporated in our permit after that. So right. We keep track of that. Probably and I we thought need, the town needs to pay that bill. I thought we did that when we started this initial paperwork. Right. There were two things. There were two. I'm points. sorry. I thought we had paid that initial assessment when we started this paperwork. There were, if you don't mind, there were just two parts to that. There was the part where we switched, uh, where, where, where we had to notify the state. I'm trying to just do this from memory. Where we had to notify the state that we were using, that this would have, a, that this needed a different permit. And so that needed its own permit to move forward in a year. And then right. we also needed to do just a normal uh, stormwater permit. I think that's right. Right, that was the $160, right? Right, yep. right. which is not what these are. I don't know. How much are those? One for 450, one for 341, and one for 286. Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. All right, Matthew, you. Scan, scan those to me or send me a copy of them, and I will call those people and find out exactly what it is so we know what it is. Okay. Yeah, it says on it, fire it's, state. It's, 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 it's frustrating because, you know, as I've said many times, this was all supposed to be taken care of by March 15th, but it's not. Right. Well, well, it does say on it, fire station, but then we had the discussion that we had already paid that 160 permit. That's why we we started this process probably a couple months ago, anyways. Right. And we discussed right. this. Um, and what do you want done with the insurance? That's still with Royal Johnson. Uh, let's see, Acadia Insurance. For questions or changes, call the Alera Group. Yeah, that's Noel Johnson. Let me, I'll call, I'll call them and see if it's possible to get that policy reinstated. I mean, it seems crazy to have it enforced for only a couple of weeks, but I hate to go without insurance. So let me see what we can do. Um, well, I think okay, we I'll, only... get, I'll get back to you, Dorinda. Well, get back to get back to the treasurer's email. I mean, Cheryl is the one handling this, and um, but I'm filling okay. in for her tonight. Um, All right, I will. Is that eight hundred dollars? What was the cost of that? Two thousand three hundred and twenty-three dollars. It was yeah, effective. So much, it would get uh, the the minute this whole process goes through, we're going to cancel that policy anyway. We would get most of that money back, but. Unfortunately, you can't pay a corporate portion. You either have to pay it or not. Okay. Send out a dollar. Okay. Um, correspondence. I just want to say that um, I did email Michelle Redman about um, the branches and the bus stop, um, the bus driver who was uh, from the fire department. I forget his name. Scott. Scott. Yes, that Scott was talking about, and they went out and assessed that curve and are going to do some brush and tree trimming on that curve. It's in Shady Road. No, no it's I mean on Route Putnam 12. Bill. Yeah, Putnamville, yeah. And then she said, traffic safety investigator is issuing a work order to install the school bus stop signs in both directions, so that's good. He also suggested that the town should check the battery of the solar power radar feedback sign since it might not be charging correctly. The 35 mile an hour sign? Yeah. There's when I came through, it wasn't working, the one going from Worcester. Yeah. 
So is that something you guys can look at since we have, yeah. we have and what happened? But you call the people that make the thing and they kind of give you a runaround and what they tell you to do doesn't work. So it's almost like you have to replace the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. I have another question. For another $16,000. But we will okay. ask uh, Eric to check into that again. Sorry. All right. Yes, Sarah, another correspondence. I do. I have a correspondence from Nicole in Day Agostino. She wanted this forwarded to the board about trash on Shady Rill. She said, I'm hearing a lot of interest from people putting up a sign to deter littering on Shady Rill near the intersection with Route 12. I know we have Green Up Day, but people are really fed up. Is there any way to put up a sign stating the fine for littering? And I just want to note that we need to have an ordinance before we can have a sign, you know. Okay. Uh, heck, if money is a concern, I'd be happy to pay for it. I'm so fed up with litter. Also, I'm hearing a lot of concerns about the amount of potholes on roads and towns. People are concerned about safety. I've had a few close calls for damaging my car myself. Are there plans to build in some of the bigger ones? And Vic, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Eric did do that. There, the, a bunch of those potholes happened since. Before. Last week they spent. Yeah, right. Right. So, okay. What's that? Thank you. Um. Can't promise you it'll stay there. After so that. then, her request would require that we have some sort of town policy on trash. Well, you have to have a you, know, you can't have a sign that says flittering five hundred five hundred dollars not, without having a right, that okay. says you can't litter. Okay. So maybe we put that on our um, to -do our, our goals our goals list. list. Yeah. yeah. Which we need to put that on our agenda. Yeah. Creating yeah. a goal list. Yeah, <laughs> Um, finish okay. review of the personnel policy should be on that list as well. And we should oh. finish a review of the, of the par personnel policy should be on that list as well. Yes. Okay, it is 6.30 and it's time for us to um, adjourn this meeting. It, are we done with this meeting or did you? No, I, no, I wanted to bring something up. Okay. It, are, Sarah, do you know if the people are coming or not? Oh, we've got him. Okay, I didn't see him. Okay, so yes, they are. Um, so have you adjourned, adjourned the select board? No. Meeting? No, we haven't adjourned, but it's 6.30 and... Can't you adjourn? Yeah, well, he, he wants to say more. Vic does, which is fine, but should we... Like, how long... What, what is Just it? a minute. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so uh, I know this wasn't warned or anything. Um, there's a couple of culverts on lower... Um, Sunnybrook Road, that we have two big culverts there and we we're gonna get a, a study, we do, we, we have a, a hydraulic study going. And if you look at it, um, the water comes from the left-hand side of the, our, as you're going up, goes through, crosses the road, goes out, comes around, it goes back across the road, then back over to the same place and there's about 800 feet in between it that's owned by Pierce, um, I can't think of the other, there's a three acre parcel and then Rudy Howell. But uh, we would have to approach those people to see if uh, they would be willing to sell or, or lease or uh, give us a, uh, right yeah. Right away, okay. <clears throat> and uh, so I was wondering if, if uh, anybody wants to look into, if they would want to look into that. So, so that you guys can put in a culvert or something? No, no. We'll put in a channel. No culverts, just You'll channel put in it. A channel. Oh, so that it so that it moves. It stays all way. on that side of the okay. road. You could eliminate those two culverts. Uh, Maybe that's be part of the road of dollars uh, in those culverts. Mm -hmm. Part of what the road committee? <laughs> I think they were. I think they were focusing on mud. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I just thought, okay. I just thought I'd brought it up, bring it up tonight, in case any of you guys get any brainstorms on who we. How get. this process moves right. forward. Right. Okay. Thanks for saying. All that. right. Yes, yeah, Sarah. So um, we've done right aways before, and what you have to do is you have to get the you have to tell you get exact dimensions of what you want on those maps, like what, exactly where you want right right away. And then we need to get our town attorney to approach the homeowners, or we approach the homeowners, and if they're amenable, then we have a, we have a right of way a, a right of way deed um, right. drawn up, passed, and put in the land. Right. And of course, the other thing is to know if A and R will let us even do that. Well, maybe those things should be researched first. What's that? Maybe that should be researched first before we have the property owners. Mm -hmm. Oh, we do have a request in to A and R that. Okay. 
but they're changing. The guy was Jaron Borg, and I understand through the, the rumor mill that he no longer does that. Somebody else does, and we've got to find that person. Okay. Well, that shouldn't be a big deal. Right. We will. Okay. I'd be happy to help you with that. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so now you can adjourn. Okay, so we're going to adjourn the meeting at 6.35, and then we're going to start a new meeting. <laughs>